give it up for Mr. Luke Stockdale. He's coming down. Jeez. Is that working? It's working. It's working. Thanks, Cole. I'm just going to get it set up. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for the volunteers. Everyone loves volunteers. Uh, my name's Luke Stockdale, uh, founder and creative director of Sideshow Sign Company. Uh, broken is a really interesting topic for me. In fact, I think that Alicia chose me because she knows I've got a major chip on my shoulder. <clears throat> this needs to be said. Um, it's not that. It's really not going to be that bad. Uh, it's a, I'm basically taking you through my journey, discovering the workings of the sign industry uh, as a designer. First off, um, Sideshow Sign Company. I figured instead of explaining what I do, we'd just go to the internet. Uh, this, oh, the mouse pad's upside down. So we, uh, we make signs. Um, I guess you could call them one-off boutique signs, whatever. Uh, we are a team of artists and designers and fabricators, um, and this is the result. I mean, I, I don't really know what else to say. Signs are signs. Uh, you may have seen some around. We do tiles. Kind of anything dimensional, um, anything that, even though that's the only flat thing in the whole uh, folio, anything that involves typography, um, branding of any sort, we make it dimensional. We also do uh, other stuff. This is a commissioned by Third Man Records. It's a, a phone charger. Um, and we came up with the idea, there's a Tesla tower, obviously, and when you put your phone in, a lightning bolt appears there. So it's not actually a sign, but we made it anyway. Uh, Matt, his amazing logo at Crema, that C rotates. Anyway, how do I get back? Uh, over to Instagram, just to show that we also do other things. Um, we just had a show on uh, recently in which this amazing guy, who I've been a fan of for a really long time, played, had show print printed uh, from hand carved wood blocks. This is him here. Anyway. So we also do some graphic design. <laughs> a little background, you can probably tell uh, I'm Australian. I grew up in rural Australia in a small town. Um, I studied design at RMIT University in the early 2000s and then I travelled around the world for a bit, mainly Eastern Europe. Uh, let me just see what the next one is. All right. Um, okay, I've got it. So, one thing people find kind of interesting, even though I find it humiliating, is that my family, growing up, we owned a magic shop and we sold circus equipment and stuff like that and fake turds and, you know... That's not, that's not me. Uh, um, and, you know, I'll sort of circle back to that a little bit later, it's, uh, it's an obvious influence on what I do now. Uh, but yeah, so I travelled for a bit, um, came back home. 2009, I'd been planning to move over, the, over to the States uh, and I was at a circus fe festival actually, which is a total coincidence, um, and I got a call saying that our family home had been uh, decimated by the 
deadliest fire in Australian history. It's called Black Saturday. It's got a name. <clears throat> it was horrific. Um, everyone in my family survived. Just uh, a lot of people died. This is probably the most famous photo from it. Uh, anyway, so, Alicia, can you remind me when I'm talking too much? Um, I, being, the only, being one of four siblings, the only, the only uh, one available at the time, I had to move back in with my mum uh, as she into a rental property, and we were flicking through brochures on new houses um, because they got some insurance money, luckily, and none of them were appealing, and we both sort of just decided, and she's slightly eccentric, as you may have guessed, with a magic shop. We both decided that we would just design one. So we did. Uh, and I spent the next year um, designing a house with my mum. And it got built, and it's beautiful. Um, it was a real success. But it also changed... Hold on. It also changed my outlook on design. It changed me as a designer, because uh, up until then, I'd been working with print, and on the screen and typography, uh, but all in two dimensions. And after building the house, I, my brain sort of um, changed uh, into a three-dimensional thing. I don't know what you call it. Um, and also working with materials. We went and sourced a lot of materials, you know, old wooden bridges and, and, uh, and brick and, and all that, and I really got a taste for it. Um, when I came to the States, 2000, I can't remember, um, I was trying to figure out what to do. I worked as a designer for a while and an interior designer. Started making things for people's interiors and realised that this is exactly what I want to do. Uh, it also makes sense. Typography was probably my strength as a designer um, and dimensional materials. Add those two together, you got signage. So I started a sign company. Uh, first off, I wanted to um, learn how to make signs traditionally, uh, which was difficult. It also was the beginning of my journey into the into, uh, sign industry. Um, top left is an old photo. Bottom right is one of my first uh, commissioned projects. Uh, very interesting process. Um, it's probably what makes us good, such good sign makers these days, is that we know how everything was made um, in the old days. Unfortunately, the sign industry wasn't what I thought it was going to be. Um, there are, and I'm generalising by the way, absolutely, uh, there are some really good sign companies, but it is a $50 billion industry. It's enormous. Uh, and the one thing that really stood out was that it's lacking design, uh, which is interesting given how many graphic designers there are. And I know there's probably a lot here, but I wonder how many have actually worked uh, to see a sign through the entire process. It's not easy. It's, uh, and one of the reasons is because the sign company doesn't really um, want us. There's bad signage everywhere. I mean, you've seen it, it's, uh, especially in the South, in my opinion. <laughs> now, we would love to blame Corel Draw, which, by the way, is the industry standard uh, in the sign industry for sign design. Or this guy. That's a great logo. These all got off sign, existing sign company websites, by the way. Uh, one of the main things, um, hold on, have I gone too far, that uh, prevents graphic designers or designers in general from, from playing a more involved part is that they have standardised materials down to about six materials. Uh, obviously for cost, for efficiency, to make more money, which is fine, that's business. Um, unfortunately, it leaves out a lot of decisions that Graphic designers would really like to make different materials. They want to see, um, you know, swatches. And but no, you really have to do things a certain way. And, and a lot of our clients come to us frustrated because um, it's like pulling teeth. Uh, they want to do something different. They want to stand out, which is what a sign is meant to do. Uh, but they can't. Um, and really, across the board, about 95% of um, the sign companies in the states 
don't venture far away from these materials. We've got LEDs, <coughs> uh, aluminum coil, plastic, printed substrate, the banners, etc., vinyl, and sign foam, which is actually an awesome product, and I use it all the time. This is another reason why there are bad signs. Um, there are bad logos. It took me three minutes to put together. Uh, you can't really help that. There's not a whole... If, if someone came to me with one of these, I, I, <laughs> I wouldn't know what to do, um, <laughs> except maybe the parrot. Or, uh, so that's another reason. That falls back on design as well. This, <laughs> uh, which, much to my disappointment, I found immediately on my iPad Pro in this program, so I didn't have to look. Um, when computers first came out in the 80s, uh, it sort of revolutionised the sign industry. One of the reasons why designers started getting pushed out is because non-designers had access to fonts, you know, so there was this laziness. Just answered that question. Um, there's a few reasons for this, actually. Uh, I have a few theories. This is one of them, like I said before, um, it's true. Unless you study interior design or you are just uh, visually very, um, I don't know, sensitive to the space around you, uh, this is all, like kerning for instance, kerning uh, only really exists in two dimensions, it doesn't. It exists in sign world as well and that's got to do with the depth of the sign and everything. You know, so I don't think it's called kerning. Lack of materials knowledge, fair enough. Uh, you're not architects. You don't learn about materials. Why would you? Lack of understanding of illumination. Um, it's a difficult thing to do, to light up a word mark or, or a brand uh, the right way. And the main reason, though, is because the industry hates you. <laughs> The Great Division, um, it's a, a kind of a, a difficult one to explain, but it's basically when the computers came in, it, it, uh, it sort of changed everything. Um, beforehand, architects would help design the signs, but there were also sign designers who, who were scouted from really good agencies in New York. Uh, Moulin Rouge sign, for instance. What's her name? Betty Mills. Um, Betty Willis. Uh, typography, they had, they had uh, their strength was in typography, that's why they were sign designers. And the sign industry realised that, that they could save a lot of money if they just got anyone and just used the fonts off the computers. So it sort of uh, encouraged this complacency um, on both sides, might I add. Um, and now it's, uh, they're two worlds apart, even in class they're worlds apart. Um, culture, definitely. Uh, and, you know, it's, it's um, something that I think can change. So, the, the solution is good design. Um, the hard part is penetrating the industry. There we go. This here, and I should have bought, I've actually got that magazine in my bag in there. That is the industry magazine. Compare that to my favourite design magazine. I mean, you know, it, it, says, uh, it says a lot. And, and on the inside, it's, you know, they, they just, it's, it's something that is uh, so foreign to them now after so many years that they don't even notice it. Uh, so, sorry, less of that, more of that, you get it. Um, one thing that we are doing is that, and this is sort of on the down low at the moment, um, but we're teaming up with a lost type and we're going to release a set, a series of fonts uh, that Riley Cran and his team are designing. <clears throat> um, we're coming up with the concepts uh, and they're going to go ahead and make some really beautiful typefaces. Now, they're going to be uh, able to be bought as print. Um, 
they're based on signage, which uh, kind of means they're all going to be monoline, if that makes any sense to you. But the interesting thing about this is that these fonts are going to uh, have neon in them, the first series anyway. We'll do other types of illumination afterwards. And for an extended licence, you are able to buy the mechanical drawings of this font, which we will do. Um, it'll be a one-off. You can only use them once. But you can take them directly to the sign company and say, here, this is what I want. It's a beautiful typeface. You can't ruin it because these are the drawings. It's one of the only ways, I think, is uh, that we really sort of have to arm wrestle the industry. Um, <clears throat> so that's one thing we're doing. I'm not allowed to show you the ones we're working on at the moment. Uh, but they're going to be beautiful for print as well. And hopefully you'll be seeing these. The cool thing about signage is that it's up for 30 years plus, you know, often even longer. Um, business card or some sort of collateral, it, you know, it, it's got a much shorter lifespan. Um, so you've got to make these decisions wisely. You know, you have to be, uh, they've got to be well considered decisions and they're not usually. This is one of the mechanical drawings I'm talking about uh, for one letter. So it's pretty involved, but it's going to be really good. The other solution um, that I'm trying to come up with uh, is a place where people can educate themselves. I think that's a huge thing that the designers need to start doing, is educating themselves on materials, on the process, on the industry, on the culture of the industry, on the prices, on everything. So I came up with the Church of Scientology. You can get your um, flags here. You're all members. You have no choice. Oh, hold. That's my fault. I was meant to make a link that goes to the church. So I actually got the URL. <coughs> Now, this is uh, non-profit, non-promotional, even though it kind of is slightly promotional if you... because it will come back to us. How do you make it big? Um, excuse, this is just a prototype uh, for what we're doing. It's just a square space. We want to make it really beautiful. Um, but it's a hub that you can go to to learn about the whole process as a designer. So you can walk into the industry confident, Make sure they do exactly what you want and at the end of the day, the streetscapes will be more beautiful, I guarantee it. So we cover concept, design, you know, sort of where the limitations are. That's a big thing when it comes to materials. Also when it comes to codes, ordinances, there are a lot of limitations but there also are loopholes if you're creative enough and convincing enough. Uh, fabrication, third parties, alternatives, materials, blah, 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 it goes on, the boring stuff. How do I go? Costs, maintenance, everything that you need to know. Uh, it's a non-promotional non educational source created in the interest of better quality signage. We also have uh, some kind of fun ways to learn about the different types of signs. If, you got, if you're into typography, you are into signage. Simple as that. It's just not accessible to you. It's expensive. It's hard to do. Uh, but my aim is to make it accessible to you. It's always going to be expensive because uh, raw materials are expensive. But... Um, with, after going to a website like this and sort of learning a little bit about the process, you're going to be able to say to your client, you know what, I can take this all the way through. Don't go to a sign company. I can take it all the way through. It helps with branding because as you're working on the branding concept, you're thinking about the materials. At the end, it's 
uh, full spectrum of uh, considered design. There's the different types. Uh, an interesting thing about signage is that they can be called something, one thing, uh, as a singular letter. Once they're on a certain part of a building, they can be called something completely different, depending on the part of the building that they are on. <coughs> Glossary, this is pretty cool. Um, look, I think you get the point. Uh, the industry is kind of broken. There's also some really good things about it, um, but the fix is in here. It's designers. It's the only way that we can make the streets look better. And I think that's really important and worthwhile. And that's all I have to say. Well, we definitely have some time for questions if you have the inclination. It always takes a minute to get the first question, except today, Thomas. No mic, buddy. Absolutely. Look, 3D printing, uh, it's a really good question actually. 3D printing is going to be huge. Um, I want to buy my first 3D printer really soon. Um, I'm, you know, we're traditional sign makers, but I, I don't care. I will do things on it if, if it calls for it. It's going to be huge. It's going to change the industry, absolutely. Um, the most complex part of the industry, however, is not the actual product. Uh, it's permits, codes, weatherability, uh, longevity. There are, uh, there's a lot of politics that go on in the industry. If anyone has ever worked on a project like this, a design is just this, like the tiniest bit uh, part of the process. So, um, also installation. Installation is a huge business. You know, some sign companies only install and only remove. Uh, so it's not just the actual tangible product, but 3D printing. Yeah, absolutely. It's going to be enormous. Yeah. And in part of the uh, church website, it talks you through the codes. It's really boring. It's, re it's frustrating. Um, Thing to do, but it's uh, it's necessary. Uh, I actually have a question. Um, I've always heard that it's really it can be really difficult to get a sign approved by the city. Um, can you can you speak to that a little bit? Like, why do you think that is? You know, I mean, is it for aesthetics? We want our neighborhoods to look a certain way, kind of the way that you know your neighbors don't want your grass to grow really high. Um, and you know stuff like that related to property values, or you know what makes it harder, what makes it easier? Are there certain types of sign that are easier to get approved? Mm. I'm really curious about all that. Yeah, um, <clears throat> I'm not an expert in codes for starters. Um, I kind of avoid it whenever I can, uh, but it's all of those things combined. Um, there are ordinances for a reason. There are laws for a reason. You have to respect them. Uh, however, it's the kind of the same thing uh, as a group of older guys getting around making decisions for women's rights. You know, it's like designers aren't making these codes. You know, um, it's it's po it's it's politics. But also, um, there's influence from the larger sign companies. Um, you know, they might be wanting to go in a certain direction, and they will do. They will lobby, and they will do whatever they can to. to uh, to change the law to, uh, accordingly. But um, yeah, it's, it's got to do with, with a lot of things. Also, insurance is a big thing, you know. 
These things are hanging over people. You know? And they're heavy and they're sharp and they're, they're, they're electric. So, um, <laughs> so insurance is a big thing. Also, his, historics. Historics is big. Um, yeah, it's, a, it's complicated. Yeah, and, and that is that is eighty percent of what we do. It's a huge part, and it's hard to track. It's hard to calculate. We just spend so much time on it. Uh, it's back and forth. Um, but that's kind of what sign companies do. Uh, they haven't had to. Even, that, it's almost another reason why the design part of it has dropped off. It's just sort of it's so small. It's like the appendix, you know. Um, but yeah, it, actually getting the thing onto a building. Is, is, a, is a lot of work. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a bit of both. I, I think that um, trends really direct things. Materials don't have as much of a part in the aesthetic anymore because you can do a lot more different things with them. You can make one material look like something else. We've turned plastic into rust before, you know, so that's, it is an aesthetic decision. I do have to say, though, that I didn't design that logo. Um, I don't know who did. They gave it to us. Um, but we, we have the luxury of being out at the moment, just because Nashville's so busy, the luxury of being able to choose who we work with. And I, as a creative director, base it on how cool it's going to look at the end of the day. And that was an example of that, them coming to us with the artwork. We have to engineer it and turn it into a sign. That neon was really difficult to do. But um, uh, yeah, that's why we chose that project. Yeah. Um, I think Nashville does a really good job. That's just my experience, though. Uh, it's in their best interest to do a good job. We've, we've um, helped them a lot. You know, one of the reasons why it's such a, a great city at the moment is because of makers, um, and I think they recognise that. But um, I think they could do things to make being a sign maker easier, for sure. <laughs> yeah, but I think Nashville's really good in particular. Yeah. Uh, Church of Scientology. Yeah. Which is what's on the bandana. The free bandanas in the back. Yeah, oh, dot .org. Dot .org. Yeah. <laughs> because it's a non-profit, unlike yeah. Scientology. Moving on. <laughs> yes. Yeah, um, interesting. Uh, this, the industry is fairly closed-lipped, um, especially when like a, a new cocky Aussie comes in and starts asking questions. Um, they also see a lot of jobs that we've got that they probably think they should have got. Um, so I've, I've found most of, most of the time learning about fabrication, especially because we started from nothing. I had no idea how to make a sign. Learning about it has been difficult, but um, it's 
pretty simple. Uh, a fabricator doesn't have to be a good fabricator to be a good sign. Fabricator, you've got, you know, it's a it's, uh, relatively simple process, welding, rolling. Um, we're trying to come up with uh, a lot of new hardware, so we're putting some research and development into hanging hardware and just things that will make basically signs just click together. Um, but yeah, otherwise it's, it's fairly straightforward fab type of fabrication once you know how to do it. Yeah. We have time for one or two more. Um, Some of his favorite signs around town that he did not do. Uh, that snuff, uh, I can't remember what it's called. Snuff, something snuff. Um, over near Marathon Village. It, what is it? Root and snuff, that's beautiful. Roof signs are beautiful. That's something that if I was ever going to challenge uh, the codes department, which I'm not going to rule it out, uh, it's, I'd ask if they could allow us to put signs on roofs again because that's absolutely illegal. Um, that's a good example of why it's a dumb rule. Uh, I mean, I, I, there's a lot of signs I like. Um, there's that old one on Murfreesboro Road. Who my neon glass bender is third generation of the guy who designed it. Um, anything that Matt does that we turn into a sign, or someone else, someone, someone else turns into a sign, uh, is my favourite. Yeah. I'm, I'm only look at the, the crap ones, actually. That's kind of my point of interest, is looking at the shit. Yeah. Last question, or care to share some crappy signs? Huh? <laughs> care to share any, cra any crappy ones that come to mind? Or is that maybe a, oh, mi a minefield for you? Yeah, just walk outside. <laughs> yeah. Walk outside and look at some signs. Well, thanks, man. Yeah. Thank you so much, yeah, Luke. Pleasure. Thanks, man. Nice work.